Hello everybody, thanks for watching. Today I want to introduce you to the device activation code feature that's new in Cisco Unified Communications Manager 12.5. This feature brings the QR code and the 16 digit pin type activations from the WebEx cloud to the premise. Unified Communications Manager has historically had a number of different ways to auto provision phones. This is the latest and it greatly simplifies the user experience. Let's dive in and check it out firsthand. Before we can use the QR code activation in CUCM 12.5, we need to ensure that the services are properly enabled and that the phones are uh, configured to actually allow this type of activation to take place. Before we can use this new simplified registration method, we need to log into the system under serviceability and we need to ensure that the device registration process is in fact enabled. We'll navigate to Tools and Service Activation. You need to ensure that the Cisco Device Activation Service is in fact activated. If it's not, simply check the box and save the settings. Next, let's jump over to CUCM Admin. And from here, we're going to ensure that our phones are actually set up to allow this type of configuration as well. Go to Device device settings, and device defaults. Search for the model phone that you want to look to enable simplified activation for. In this case, I'm going to look for the 8845. You can scroll across. You see that I have activation code selected. This is the option we want. Otherwise, you would use auto registration, which is the legacy auto registration option. It's also worth mentioning that the phones have to be running 12.5.1 and later software for this feature to actually work. When you've confirmed these settings, you can navigate to device, phone, and provision a phone. You'll hit the add new button. You want to select the type of phone that you are going to provision. Now it's worth mentioning that only 8800 series and 7800 series phones are applicable to this process. All other phones, older phones, will actually have to still be activated using prior methods. Let's pick the Cisco 8845 since I have an 8845 here. You hit the next button. In this case, you will actually leave the MAC address blank. You'll select the require activation code for onboarding. You need to configure the basics of the device. Again, you can configure this any way that you need to for your environment. We'll use the default device pool. We'll use the standard 8845 button template. We're going to have an anonymous phone, no user assigned. This but not least, we must have a SIP profile and we also must have a device security profile. When you've completed these steps, hit save. You'll notice that a bat and a random uh, MAC address are filled in in the MAC address field. This will be replaced once our device registers. You're also going to want to make sure that you have a directory number assigned. In this case, I will plug in a plus E164 lab phone number. We will save the configuration and we'll navigate back to the phone at this time. You should now see a view activation code option on the screen. If you click this option, the activation code will be presented. You can use this information as the administrator to perform the registration, or more likely, you can copy this information and send it to the remote user who's trying to activate the phone. Let me show you another way that the end user can access this activation code. If the phone provisioned is assigned to an end user, that end user can go to the Unified Communications self-care portal. That user can log in, and then from there, they should be able to view the activation code. Let's give it a try. Upon logging in, you'll see the My Phones tab. Typically, this is going to uh, give you some really basic information. Here, we can actually see it requires activation. If we click the gear, we see we can edit, view settings, download the manual, and because the activation code feature is enabled, 
and this phone is pending activation, we can see the view activation code option as well. If you click this option, as an end user, you see the activation information that allows you to provision your own phone. We would follow this process the same way as an end user to do the last step of the provisioning that we would as an administrator. When you have the QR code and the 16 digit pin available, either a sheet of paper or a phone or whatever, you can uh, take it, turn it around and show it to the QR code reader on the phone. It will scan, connect, you should see a success indication. It will take up to 60 seconds or so for the phone to complete its registration process. And once the registration is complete, your phone should be ready for use. There you can see the phone has its E164 number. The soft keys are ready to go. The date and time is current. Uh, we're ready to start making calls. Let's make a call to uh, one of our other phones here, which is plus one five 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 one thousand. And you can see that it is up and running. Hopefully that's been a helpful introduction to the device activation feature in Unify Communications Manager. Uh, as always, we'd love to have you subscribe, come back and check out our content often, join the discussion, and uh, share it with others. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.